don't know shit. All right, so on this episode, uh, and yes, we are going to keep doing episodes. I've had enough of this. It's not social distancing, it's physical distancing. Get in touch with your people, say hi, and all that jazz. On this episode, I'm going to have my buddy, Mr. Liam Killen. Liam, I met him while he was the drummer, and like long-term drummer, like 10 years-ish type thing, uh, with uh, Danny Rebel and the KGB. And um, he's also started this really cool uh, YouTube channel where um, he, he gets to try out all this brand new gear right when it comes out. And he, so he's on the uh, cutting edge with this stuff. It's really cool. And he's, you know, producing music, all this type of stuff. And uh, just a wonderful guy. So I just want to check in with him. Say, hey, what's up? What's new? And all that kind of jazz, right? So check it out. Thanks for staying with me. Punch that subscribe button, slap that bell thing, and uh, it really does help support the channel, so please do it. And um, don't forget, um, K-Man Don't Know Shit is brought to you by TheInPrint.com. You know, go to their website, uh, message them, or call them up, or whatever it is, however you like to communicate. And uh, ask them questions, see what you can make. I know they make, you know, <clears throat> toques and uh, caps and hoodies and shirts and all this kind of jazz and much, much more. Um, so, uh, you know, just reach out to them and ask them their opinion. You know, whether you're like, oh, I have this image I want printed. How do I do it? Uh, what format do I send it in? All that. They're super friendly, super helpful, have different ways of working and uh, yeah, I just love them. So uh, yeah, go check them out. Theinprint.com. Tell them K-Man sent you. All right, because uh, maybe you'll get a little good out of that. So that's a little hint. All right, now guys, let's do it. Let's get it on. Boom! Oh! K-Man, no, no shit. So Liam, how are you doing, man? Pretty good. The camera on. I'm good. Cool. I'm good. You? Doing great. I mean, you know, it took a bit of getting used to with all this isolation going on, but I found the the first week was a lot harder than the weeks after, which I found kind of weird. I thought with time it would get, you know, harder, but in fact, I think I'm just adjusting better. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's the same way for me. I mean, my, my life hasn't changed that much because I spend most of my time inside anyways, like just producing stuff. Um, but it's definitely it's been a difference for my go for my girlfriend. Like she she does massage therapy and uh, she's out of work until June probably or maybe even later. So that sucks for her and uh, it's definitely an adjustment. But it is what it is. Like we'll we'll get through it. I think it's good for people that are hobbyists. You know what I mean? Like finally, yeah. some people are seriously celebrating the time on their hands right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm sort of in that category. Like I'm. Uh, I'm vibing right now. Like I'm just kind of doing my thing and and just uh, creating tracks and and there's no one um, there's no like pressure to to hang out with people because I'm I'm more of an introverted person. Yeah. So uh, for me, like I, obviously I still like to show, socialize and whatever, but it's just nice to have uh, to not have that pressure, you know. Oh, for sure, for sure. It's funny. I was talking to this one person that uh, has Asperger's uh, syndrome. And I was like, so how are you coping, coping with all this? And looks at me and says, I'm a professional. I'm always trying to keep my distance my whole life. I'm like, you win. <laughs> yeah, man. So, Liam, I met you when you were drumming with uh, Danny Rebel uh, back in the day. And then I, I found out that you've been working as a music producer. And then I found out that you have this YouTube channel going on where you're, uh, I think, testing out or reviewing a bunch of gear, something along those lines. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm uh, basically just demoing gear and um, software. I'm, I, I, I focus specifically on Logic because uh, that's that's the DAW that I the digital audio workstation that I use. And um, yeah, just trying to trying to to expand and become more of like a personality and not just a guy that reviews stuff. Trying to maybe do the vlogging thing and all that as well. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's been going well so far. Like um, I'm like I'm getting all the right signals. So I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I'm getting all the wrong signals, but I'm going to do it anyway, too. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I, I watched one of your videos the other day. I can't remember what the piece of gear was. It was basically it looked like a white keyboard that was producing all kinds of sounds and working on itself. And then I was like, man, like I always knew that you were, you know, into like all, all this new stuff. But I mean, some of it's pretty cutting edge stuff there. It looks like great toys anyway. Yeah, it's uh, it's. 
It's new. It's it's uh. You'd be surprised though. A lot like there's a lot of people that use it already. The the one that you're talking about, I think, is calling. Uh, it's called the OP1. Um, yeah, and that's the one exactly. Yeah, and so there's a lot of different artists that use it, like Mark Hopus from Blink 182, uh, Beck, like who else? Uh, I'm blanking right now. K Trinata, I'm pretty sure uses it. All these new uh, Tame Impala. There's like so many artists that use it. Uh, but it's still kind of underground at this point. Like, not there's not that many people that know what it is, especially in North America. But like in in Sweden and like uh, in many many parts of Europe, it's like massive. It's like a massive instrument. That whole company, it's called Teenage Engineering, and uh, it's huge. It's like IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> IKEA for the digital geeks. I love it. <laughs> but but what is it? Like you put samples in it. Uh, yeah, you could do anything with it, really. Like you could, uh, you could sample with it. It's a, it's also a synth engine, so there's a bunch of synth sounds in there. Um, you could like program sequences, like beats and all that into it. It's really, uh, it's you could do anything with it, which is great. That's why I love it so much. And also, also, it's like it's easy to film too. Like for what I do, uh, it's it's um, you have to make your gear look nice to like make it look appetizing for people to buy it or whatever. And uh, it's really not hard to do with the OP-1. Like, it's, it just films very well. It's a very nice-looking instrument. It's fun. Uh, it, it has, like, a Game Boy sort of quality to it. Like, it... It reminded me of the old Casio keyboards, almost. You know, just didn't look there. <laughs> yeah, totally. That, that's where I'm at on, the, on this, like, technological spectrum, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Ken, those are, those are good keyboards, though. They, yeah. What what got you into like a well not just I was gonna say what got you into producing music that's not really what I mean I bet I mean like you know using these different uh, tools to make your music and stuff like uh, how how did you hear about this and get into this? Um, it was kind of a it's it was a long transition like um, I started getting into production when I was uh, in this band the Franklin Electric. Uh, it's like a pop a pop man from here in Montreal, and and one of the um, the the guitarists in the band he's a uh, he's a producer as well, and uh, he was he was producing what's called stock music. So he would produce for these libraries, um, stock music libraries, and they and people would buy his tracks basically, and that's how he made a living. So I I started to do that, and then I just I met certain people. Do you know? Do you remember Derek? Uh, what's his, what's his last name? I know a lot of Derek's. What's, I, I forgot his last name. Um, anyways, yeah, he used to live in Montreal and he, he, uh, he's a programmer. I, I'm pretty sure you know who he is. Like he's, he's part of the, uh, like the whole scene, the whole ska scene. Like he's been to, to K-Man shows for sure. He used to date, or I think he was friends or dated Katie. I'm not sure. He was friends with her. Oh, I think I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly who you mean. Derek, how you doing, man? <laughs> you know, I, I'm terrible at like not remembering anybody, right? <laughs> I'm I'm bad with last names. So, uh, anyways, yeah. So he he had he had an OP one, like, and he was the one, the first one to show it to me, and uh, I just loved it right away. I was like, what did, what is that? Like, it just kind of caught my attention. Uh, and that that's that particular model is very expensive. So I actually started with I started with a different model. It's called the OPZ, uh, which is basically just a, a newer model. It's less expensive. It doesn't have as many features. Um, right, right. And then eventually I financed the OP1 because <laughs> I couldn't buy it all at once. It's like two thousand dollars. The thing it's fucking expensive. Um, ah. Yeah, it's a lot. It's crazy, especially yeah. for it's tiny. It's like for that little piece of gear, you're like, oh shit, that's two grand. What? Uh, but you could. There's a bunch of you could do with it. Um, so anyways, yeah, that, that's kind of where, where it all started. And then since then, um, they, I've, I've done a bunch of, um, product reviews and like just demos of the OP one on my YouTube channel. And, uh, so they recently reached out to me and we're like, and, uh, we, we have an agreement. They basically just send me gear now, like for free. And they're like, okay, well, they're like, okay well, that's what we want, man. <laughs> like, uh, living the dream over here. And, um, yeah, so. That's where I'm at right now. Like they're basically just sending me all these new models or existing models and saying, you know, uh, demo this on your channel as well. And um, yeah, 
that's it. That's where we're at. I would like to call on Porsche right now to send me one so I can demo it. <laughs> but with the OP1, can you do an entire track on 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 its own with the OP uh, OP1, or do you do stuff in the OP1 and then transfer it? In, you know, mix it with like uh, I don't know in Pro Tools or whatever, and uh, that's just one thing. Or do you do the entire track on OP1? Uh, you could do either. Like you, I've I've made full tracks in the OP1. Okay. But you could also use it just as like an external instrument where you record it into your into your uh, di digital audio workstation. You could do it like that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I've done I've done a I've done both. Like for my YouTube videos, I like to um, uh, feature what like everything that it's capable of doing. So I focus mostly in the OP one. Uh, but I'm gonna start making videos where I use it as like an external thing, like part of a Part of, part of the puzzle sort of thing instead of just like a whole track in the yeah, yeah exactly see that's how I thought I, I wasn't sure because like I mean these days it, it's so cool because there's all this like new amazing stuff coming out and it's getting more and more transparent as well at the same time I mean basically it's just another tool to you know get whatever's in your head out right but uh, no no they, they look cool I've never touched anything like that you're gonna have to have me over and show me how to one day <laughs> I'd love to yeah they're they're really interesting and it, it, there's just so much you could do with it and uh, it's the type of thing, though, where you love it or you hate it. Like, I noticed that some people, they're like, oh, it looks like a little Game Boy. Like, I, hate, I don't like that. And other people love it. Um, and I'm one of the people that, that freaking loves it, man. Like, all of their gear. Like, I have, there's another one here. This is called the, the Pocket Operator. It looks like my calculator. It literally looks like a Game Boy. <laughs> right? It looks like a Game Boy. Right? Uh, and it's, it, you can't do as much on that thing, but... Um, it's like a sequencer and you could like sample and stuff in there. And but it's super cool. I mean, I, I picture these parents in, in a car. It's hot and the kids are in the back or whatever. They could be playing their Game Boy. But I mean, yeah. you know, or they could be producing wicked cool music. You know? <laughs> it, it's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's it. yeah. You know, that, I understand also what you mean, how like, you know, you always get like, usually I find this older people, but they're, they call themselves more purists and stuff and aren't really open to you know using a new technology or a new thing i do understand it because like there is always the learning curve like you know is a person ready to go through another learning curve or is he going to stick with uh, you know what he knows or yeah you know like i do understand that but i mean if, if you have that time or you know the type of mind that can really take in new things well i mean it, it's really cool to, to you know to get on board with all these uh, types of products I, I think it's awesome man it's it's also just a good exercise like even if you're a hobbyist and you're you want to learn something new like it's it's a really good way to to kind of expand on on like the way you you think about music it's mm -hmm. it really changed everything like stepping into the because as you know i'm a drummer and i've always been like a piece yeah. of piece of the puzzle for for my whole life like uh basically being a hired gun in, in many cases and i don't really have that much like control over the whole uh production of the track so like just working with these, you you have that, and you could you could use samples, and it's just like a whole new way of looking at music, which really intrigued me. Well, there's a whole aspect about like you know having creative control, I guess as well, because I I, I totally understand. First of all, I did want to talk to about drums as well, because you, my man, are a wicked ass drummer. I love your drumming, but Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, what's really cool is like I could understand if you're, you know, getting paid to go sit in with somebody and play the drums. You have no creative control of what's coming out and hitting the people. I mean, except for, you know, what you're doing on the drums. But and even that might be led by the band or, or the song, or whatever, you know. So I totally understand needing an outlet as well for your own creative control and putting, you know, getting your own inside out, you know. That's it. Do you, yeah, do you write like, a lot of songs on it? Songs on it. Uh, I don't, I don't write like, uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I haven't really stepped into lyrics yet. I'm not sure, okay. like, I don't see myself doing it uh, anytime soon, but maybe I'm not like, I'm not uh, nixing it, obviously, like maybe one day I'd be into it. But uh, right now I've been focusing mostly just on like the production of the music and like, uh, right. just getting all that, like my, my production chops together, basically. Uh, and that and it's it ties in perfectly with my channel. So like I'm gonna that's that's what the focus is now. You know, like I'm just focusing on 
new ways of producing music, basically. And wouldn't you also say a new way to um, motivate yourself? Because I, I, I've i noticed, like, you know, I wanted to work on, like, some video editing because I knew nothing about it. I wanted to get a little home studio together, but, you know, sometimes to get going. But, I mean, even doing my channel has gotten me motivated to learn all these other little side skills as well, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like a muscle, man. It's really like learning new things is a, is a muscle. It's like a muscle in your brain. And no matter it's like no matter what it is too. Like if you if you're just like content with your lifestyle, like that's fine, but if it, it I think for me I I like I I'm, I'm the type of person that needs that sort of um challenge, I guess. Like of learning sure. learning new things and um I don't know. I just feel happier after I, I figure something out. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Like after you figure out the, the your video software, you're like, oh shit, it works. And yeah, man, absolutely. I, I, <laughs> well, we live in a very interesting time. It's like I was talking to somebody about how they um, are changing the way they're teaching youth right now and probably not fast enough because the youth can learn stuff so much better. And I mean, it's the difference between memorizing everything or finding out how to learn a example i mean these days if you want to learn how to make pot cookies just go on google and say how to make pot cookies and follow the step-by-step -step directions or the k-man don't know shit uh, episode on how to make pot cookies <laughs> but you know what i mean like okay, youth just need to learn how to find how to do stuff instead of just how to do it you know and i mean you're always motivated by being able to try out all these new things i've really been on a push for that myself you know whether it's yoga or working out with kettlebells or cooking or playing a new riff on guitar or learning a bit of classical guitar or you know sitting here and talking uh, you know to you right now and just learning how to do Sure. Yeah. And that's that's one thing uh, about the whole coronavirus thing as well. It's like obviously there's so many negative aspects of it. Of one of the but one of the positive things or one of the things that's going to change for sure, people are going to realize that they're they're a lot less um vulnerable if they're working like online jobs. Like for example, my yeah. girl a good example is my girlfriend, like she she has a she's a massage therapist, so she's very hands-on work. And in a crisis like this, she can't work. And it's the same thing for so many other people like who have like very hands-on jobs or like industrial working type jobs. So I think it's going to kind of change the mindset of a lot of people and push them more into the into the tech direction because it's just a lot a lot easier to to access everything. Like if you post something on Instagram, let's say let's say you play a show and there's like a hundred people there. It's like that's 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 cool. But if you post something on, on Instagram, I know this it's like a different thing, obviously, but just looking at the numbers, if you post something on Instagram and you get the same amount of views, it's like it's almost like you're getting the same amount of exposure. It's just in a different way, obviously. Right. But um, I don't know. I think this the whole tech um, aspect of like all these different industries, it's really taking over. And it I, I, I tend to agree with you, but I also think it gives value to other things as well. For instance, we need electricity. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I mean, it's kind of like, what's an, assemb uh, uh, an essential job right now? All these businessmen that were making millions by day right now, they don't seem so important to me, to a lot of people. I mean, you know, it's one of these problems where you can't just throw money at it, which is what I find is really interesting. You know, you, you get all these people like, you know, literally, you know, they sit on making deals or trading and doing all, all, all this kind of thing to make their money. And all of a sudden we realize do we really need them as much as we need uh you know the person uh, opening up the grocery store you know what i mean and then when you look at the pay gaps obviously maybe you need some schooling or have a certain type of personality or just need to know how to fuck people over real good like to make money you know but like i i what i'm hoping or what i'm i'm really wondering when we get out of this when we're talking about salaries and what people are worth and all this kind of thing maybe it's a good time to narrow that gap a little bit you know i'm not saying change the world you know what i mean but i think yeah. ho hopefully it opened up a lot of eyes to like you know what's important what's not important and uh you know if somebody's holding on to you know 
five million dollars, maybe they could get by. Maybe they could get by on two million dollars. Yeah. You know, throwing that other three on something else. Yeah, and especially when you get to like billions of dollars. Like, I think there's right? there should be a law where like if you don't need a billion dollars, you just don't. So let's say like cap it off at a billion, right? So anything you make over a billion, that should be like directly donated or, or given to something. Something like worthwhile, you know? Uh, absolutely. Like what's the point of having that much money? Well, I, I totally agree with you. And I'm even wondering like, you know, make a, you're saying to make a law to have a cutoff point. Well, I'm like, how about we just sidestep the law? Like, I mean, basically if a bunch of people see this one person is hoarding 10,000 rolls of toilet paper. Nobody else on the street has one. You better be uh, able to protect that toilet paper. You know what I mean? Yeah, at some point, yeah. people are just going to say, wasn't wait there, a minute. <laughs> there, was three, there was, um, who I, I think it was my girlfriend who told me this. She said that uh, there was a guy who bought like all of the, the hand sanitizer off of Amazon and he like hoarded yeah. it for himself. Did you hear about this? Yeah, and then tried to resell it. Yeah, for like way more expensive. But I didn't. I think the government, yeah. the government stepped in and was like, "You can't do that." That's it. I think right? it's really. Right. Yeah, you're totally right. You're totally right, and that's what you know yeah. we're talking yeah. about. I think it's going to be an interesting time as we get out of this. Maybe, maybe you know, there's going to be slices, of, uh, slices of the population that are just like, "Wait a minute, we let you hold that money." That's how it really worked. What if we stop yeah. letting you hold that money? Yeah. What if the army or your personal bodyguards all of a sudden they're like, "Fuck that! It's not just the money." You know, it's going to be an interesting time, that's for sure, man. You know, I'm not uh, expecting yeah. everything to change, like I yeah. said, but I, I do think that uh, it's a good time to take a look at the pay gap, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I agree with you there. And it's it's like, at the same time, there's, there's, there's a lot of gray area there, too. It's like, at what point... At what point are you making too much money where right. that money should be given right. to someone else or to, exactly. to people who need it? And it's like, it's probably a lot more complicated than that, but... Uh, of course. But, you know, at the same time, it could be a lot more simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like we, yeah. we complicate it in society by, you know, with the laws, with the protocols, with the red tape, whatever you want to call it, you know, but when it comes down to it, you've got a bunch of loot that you're not sharing and you're paying off little yeah. people and screwing over yeah. more people to make more loot. It's At just some greed. Point, you can even call greed. that a disease. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, oh, that look, that person greed. over there that has that hoarding disease going on over there. <laughs> It pretty yeah, I mean it pretty much is. It's like at a certain point, I think if you're if you're making that much money, it's not about the money anymore. It's it's more about uh, being better than your pe than people than your competitors. Like if you exactly. have a billion dollars, exactly. you just want to be better than the next guy. You don't care about the money anymore. So it's like yeah, it is it like, is kind of a disease. Yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. I, th I think a lot of, you know, it's like you, you go online or whatever and you keep hearing things like, you know, I think uh, nurses should be making twice the amount of money uh, that they make now or wipe out their student loan and stuff. There's a lot of interesting things to be said about those types of mentalities. For instance, should a person be getting in crazy loan to become a nurse, you know, or is that a service that we need and is essential and will encourage you to become a nurse? You know, there's yeah. going to be some big questions as a society to ask ourselves. And I, I find that's the, the, the real take on, on all this, you know, aside from obviously staying healthy and keeping, you know, yourself well and all that kind of thing. But I mean, we've never went through this. Uh, it, well, that's not completely true. I mean, there has been, you know, other times where there's been quarantines, but it's the only time there's ever been a quarantine where everybody's still in contact with each other, you know, and that's what I find right. is interesting. Right, 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 I understand. Yeah, right. Because well, of, of technology. Well, absolutely, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, what, do, like, when, you know, I want to back it up a minute. I was talking about what an amazing drummer you are, and you are. Um, what what got you into music as a youngster uh, growing up here? Because obviously you put in your 10,000 hours already at a young age. So, uh, you know, what got you going? Uh, I was, I was really, I was just banging on tables and shit when I was like nine. Uh -huh. And so my parents were like, do you want to play drums? And I said, sure. So my, my dad bought me a drum kit. I think, yeah, I think I was an eight or nine. I was really into it. I, I got like, I got good relatively quickly and, and, um, played at a talent show and like, um, everyone was like cheering my name at the end of it. So I was like, oh shit, I, I really like this. Like I'm good at this because I'm not like a sporty, 
sporty team player type of guy. Like it's, it's something that I found that I was good at. And so I figured I'm going to try and excel in it. And then yeah. um, in high yeah. school, I met a few people, uh, a few musicians that were like pretty good and they inspired me. And so I really got obsessed almost with drums. Um, I was playing, I was practicing all the time. I, I, I didn't really have a good time in high school, so I was like very secluded from, I tried to seclude myself a lot, sort of like right now. Um, and I just, pract I just practiced a bunch. And, and so, um, and then eventually Danny Rubble was the first band that I joined. I was 16, I think, when I joined the band. Oh, wow, and really? I had no played idea. That, I played in the band for 10, 12, like 12 years almost, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> um, and, and then, yeah, I went, went, to, went to school for, for jazz performance, um, went to Vanier, and then eventually I graduated, went to McGill, did that whole thing, played in a, like a million different bands. Um, and yeah, it was just something that I, I really enjoyed doing because it was something that I was good at. So I figured, why not try to See, I get, try to I get the vibe that you're a bit of a loner in a way. Like, you know, growing up in high school yeah. and not being the cool yeah. kid and focused on your stuff. But I mean, in my opinion, you know, for any kids that would ever watch the show, which there won't be, I'm sure I'll be shut down real fast. But, it, it, you know, if a kid was watching this show... I would just love to tell them that, you know what, you feeling outside of the pack and being a loner, you're part of the coolest, you know, slice of this world because it's usually these people that come up and do all the fucking wild shit and after they get yeah. out of that school, yeah. they're the ones with the cool stuff going on, you know? Usually, yeah. Yeah. I noticed that too, for sure. It's usually the, the more secluded, like, uh, isolated kids that have more, for uh, sure. I guess, cool sure. or fun, like, more interesting jobs to offer. Mm-hmm. So, but like you with that, with, you know, being 12 years with Danny Rebel, yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw pictures of you guys going all over Canada and stuff like that. Do you miss the road life at all? Uh, that's something I, I realized that it wasn't for me. Like as I kept doing it, like I, I did the road, road life for like 10, not 10, like eight years maybe. Uh, not like full, full time, but like I had been touring and all that for, with all these different bands across Canada several times, like, you know, the drill, like, you know, how harsh that is. And for me, yeah, it, it's it wasn't for me, for everybody, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it wasn't for me. And like, it's just, I don't know for, for me, um, I felt like you have to be a, like a specific type of person to, to, to do that. You know, like you re you really have to love the road. Um, and not really care about the, the lifestyle change that you're going through. Like, obviously you're, you're taking like a, a step down in lifestyle, right? You're sleeping, <laughs> you, you're not making much money. It's true. And so if you, yeah, if you like, I'm not, I'm not bashing it, but like, if you, if you really have to love the stage and like love, um, the road to, to, to like put up with that, you know? And for me, it, um, it just wasn't worth it for me. I, I don't know. I just felt, um, after a while of it, I just felt tired of it. And I, I felt like it wasn't, it wasn't the future for me. Like I like, I'm a homebody. I like to stay home and, um, and like, I like going on trips too, but when it's like for a month long trip and the conditions suck and like, you're not eating well and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's just, it's too much for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally get it. It's that even, you think that even bigger bands, uh, wouldn't go through this, but you're like, if you're touring in like a decent, like a, a, a mediocre success band, you're still touring in shit conditions. Like you'd be <laughs> surprised. And so for me, I was like, even if you climb up the ladder, like the conditions don't get that much better. So I was like, ah, not for me. Yeah, it's so funny you say that because like, you know, sometimes like, I mean, I, I consider us very lucky because like we, we take care of our shit pretty well, you know what I mean? But still, like we're happy, you know, to have hotel rooms and stuff like that. But we're still five guys in one hotel room, you know what I mean? Some people are like, wow, that's yeah. great. Other people are like, dude, how do you do it, you know? Yeah, like I need my sleep, you know? It's like, <laughs> if I don't sleep, if I don't sleep well for one night, it's okay. But two nights in a row, I'm just like, I'm useless like i can't function well you know <laughs> <laughs> so with, with the drums though again just, uh, back to just drumming are you still uh, like recording dr uh, you know tracks for other people and stuff like that when they need a drummer or? uh i don't have a place to play acoustic drums anymore like i have a little drum kit uh like a triggered drum kit like trigger based yeah, yeah. stuff um but i i don't play i haven't played acoustic drums in like in months now so really yeah I, i'm just focusing on 
production now. Like I, obviously I'm not gonna throw it out the window, like it's definitely gonna make its way back into what I'm doing and into my channel. But um, for now I'm, t I'm sort of just taking a different journey and, and love it. Uh, absolutely. But I mean, isn't that the beautiful thing though? It's like, you know, people that do, or, uh, you know, it's not everybody that can focus on one thing, you know, and really get I into it. I mean, it it's cool at the same time. I mean, like here you are, you, you did 12 years of one lifestyle. Here you are on this new journey and it, it shows that you love it too. I, I watched a couple yeah. of your, uh, of your uh, uh, videos there and I, I thought they were great, man. Really like, a, you Thank know, you. the quality is good. The production is amazing and you're fun as hell on it. I mean, what more do people want, you know? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm are just trying to make uh, it as entertaining as possible. Wow. And it's working for sure. Are you uh, going to be, uh, are you putting like producing other people's music on the back burner a bit right now? Or are you still focusing on that? Uh, same. Yeah. I'm, I'm focusing a hundred percent on my own shit now. Like I, I've, uh, I've produced, I produced for, for other artists as well. I've done, I did the whole stock music thing that I explained before, um, that my friend got me into. I, uh, that was my, that was my bread and butter basically for, for years. And that's how I made most of my money. Um, yeah. and that kind of gave me my chops to, to, to do what I do now. And yeah, so now I'm, I'm actually not making much money right now. This is sort of an investment for what for in, in my YouTube channel and I'm trying to grow it and then eventually, uh, make, make a living out of it. Um, but, um, but yeah. That's freaking awesome. I, I love I love the concept of people being their own bosses and living the way they want to live. I, I mean, that, I think it's a dream style of life. I'm not somebody that likes to take orders from people. You know, I just don't handle that very well. But I mean, to be able to to do something you like and be your own boss at the same time. I mean, some people are their own boss, but still hate what they do, you know? And so you, it's, it's freaking awesome that you've developed these skills. It's funny, I'm talking to you and I just saw a rabbit just go right across in front of my window. I'll be back in one minute. Yeah, bud. I'll be back in one minute. You got it. I'll just chill here, man. <coughs> Liam's the shit. Love this guy. That's really good. That's a mixture of... Uh, Helios uh, flower and uh, I have it mixed also with a uh, Sierra flower. Sierra is, um, you know, it's a higher strain uh, of a uh, CBD. It has some THC, but only like 3.4% or something like that. And then the Helios, that's a good 17 to 18% uh, THC. Together, I find they work really well. I've been smoking them together for a while now. It's time for a new bong though. I left it out in the cold and it froze, so it broke part of the bong here on the bottom. It kind of cracked as the ice made it expand. So, man, I need a new sponsor. I need free bongs. Somebody hook me up or tell a friend. If you have a friend that works in a bong store or a head shop, definitely uh, get somebody in contact with me. I think we need to talk and figure some shit out. You know, I'll review all the bongs you'll want. <laughs> That's where it's at. Uh, you guys, uh, while um, Liam has gone to just uh, flip over his uh, camera for a second, um, like I was saying before, I hope you're all doing really well. And uh, if you want, drop a comment down here uh, underneath the video and uh, say hi to somebody. And, um, you know, when they talk about social distancing, I realized I really don't like that term. I'm much more into physical distancing and there's lots of ways that uh, people can do. It. I mean, these days, here we are talking just on messenger uh, on your uh, phone. And I mean, everybody has messenger on your telephones. If you don't get out of the dark ages, you bum. But you know, check in on your people or have a deeper conversation with somebody you know already that you like their vibe. You know, it's the time to do this. Uh, we have a lot of time on our hands and the best thing we can do is being social at a distance right now as we get through this bullshit you know and uh, see if we can make some kind of positive change out of it i mean it's the only way to go if you ask me because like i'm not saying everything was broken or anything like that but you can always make shit better in this world you know you can make better beer right get on it people just pick a project whatever it is and get on it speaking of beer i'm gonna go get one da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. I dropped a can of beer. Dropped a can of beer on the floor. It's gonna explode in my face. 
Yeah. I was just smoking <laughs> weed the whole time that you were fixing that. Mm. Cheers, man. <laughs> Cheers. Mm hmm. Oh, that's good. I got Belgian moon, Belgian white uh, style. Yeah. I, I like Belgian moon. That's great. Have you ever been to Belgium? For like a split second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were there, I think, for three nights. On a tour. I was on a tour. Oh, yeah. Which tour were you on? Uh, with Franklin uh, Electric. With Franklin Electric. That's wicked. We were there yeah, for I'm three days. And in three days, I don't think I'm we like went it. to bed at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Where else did you guys go? You 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 did you did a few uh, Euro tours. Uh, no, we've only done one actually, but it was just crazy enough guys okay. to make a ton of stories. We're um, we had all kinds of plans. We we got our P twos uh, ready to play in the U S. We did our first weekend there, and then with all this shutdown and everything, basically we're throwing our P two in the garbage. I'm not even sure if we'll get reimbursed for that or not. I highly doubt it. But I uh, know Europe was fun. We we went through. Um, France, Belgium, the UK, um, Netherlands, somewhere else too. How, how, it was a wild ride, man. <laughs> Real good time over there. Have you been to Europe a couple of times? Uh, I went twice with Franklin Electric. Wow. And what was your favorite place? My favorite place uh, actually was was uh, Paris because you, a lot of people don't have much, a lot of nice things to say about Paris. But when we were there, it was a uh, festival d'été. Um, so it was like, right. it was bumping, like there was so, so many people there. It was beautiful. Like every day we were there, I think we were there for three days. It was so nice. We went to the Louvre. We, we like hung out, um, had like a nice Airbnb, Airbnb just out of, out of the city. Um, yeah. What else did we do? We had our, we had our, uh, croissant, our baguettes, <laughs> our, our Parisian, uh, street food. Sorry. I, I just can't wait to get back. Honestly, it's funny. I, I think being cooped up for the last three weeks or whatever, I have that itch to get back on the road right now like I haven't had in a long time. I mean, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> but at, yeah. when you talk about street food, one of my favorites was in Belgium when they have all their little waffle places right on the street, almost like how like Toronto would have their yeah. street meat barbecues, but there they got their waffles out there. I love that shit. Yeah, yeah just the smell too is like so inviting. Mm-hmm. That's wicked. Hey, Liam, I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me today. Man, I'll have My you pleasure. on any time, all My right? Pleasure. And uh, stay yeah. well. Reach out to your friends. Make sure they're well, too. Man, you rock with your new channel. Course, Check man. it out, everybody. Liam, wicked. We Liam Killen on YouTube. I'll drop the link underneath after. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Cheers, you so much brother, for having me. All. all the best. Be well. Cheers, stay safe. All the yeah, best. Man, you too. Cheers. Stay Peace. safe. Punch that subscribe button, slap that bell thing, and uh, it really does help support the channel, so please do it. Oh! Game and no no shit! Game and no no shit!